Hello, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be going through my Pyro toolboxes and uh, just doing, uh, I'm kind of going through, going to do an inventory, see um, what I maybe am out of or need to replace in there. But I thought this would be a good opportunity to show everyone else what I keep in my Pyro toolbox and uh, maybe you can figure out some, find some new things that you might want to pick up. Uh, maybe you can leave me a comment and tell me uh, things that you think I'm missing. Uh, um, before we get started, if you would, please uh, go ahead and like and subscribe the video. If you find it helpful, please share it with others. Um, definitely helps out the channel and I certainly appreciate it. Uh, so to start with, before we even get into the toolboxes, uh, in case you're not tracking on the whole concept of a pyro toolbox, if you're not doing your show at your house, or uh, maybe even if you are, these would come in handy, but especially if you're taking your show on the road anywhere, these toolboxes or some sort of toolbox is going to come in handy. Uh, I particularly like these rigid kind. Uh, there's a third wheeled bottom that I use to keep my modules in and their boots. Uh, um, there's a couple other varieties you can get that all interlock together. Uh, there's a basket, a smaller uh, like Milwaukee style pack out. Uh, they're pretty reasonably priced. I think this time of year, especially uh, maybe a little later this year, they'll do it again. This past couple of years, around Black Friday or so, it seems like they do the whole three-piece set. Um, so these two plus the wheeled bottom bigger one for like a hundred bucks. Um, so keep an eye out. I, I really like them. We'll go through them. We'll kind of show you what um, they look like. But they they lock together. Um, I've added some uh, reflective tape to mine just to make it stand out from other people's. I think about half the people in our club have these now. Um, so you do need to kind of uh, decorate them so that they uh, are easy to tell apart in the field and you don't pick up somebody else's toolbox. So let's go ahead and kind of dive into one here. Uh, let's get this over here. So locking latches on the front. This one, uh, you might be able to see here, kind of has a big area in front, a uh, big section here. You can just throw a bunch of junk in. And it has these little tool pouches. So what do I have? I have some gloves. Usually not the gloves I use. These are like extra gloves. Uh, screws. Screws, staples, staple gun. This comes in really handy if you're trying to quickly get down a bunch of plastic sheeting or something to protect from weather. Um, better than tape, um, quicker than tape. Uh, do, I mean, think about if you have concerns about this being a sparking device. Um, Personally, wherever I'm stapling something, there's not a fuse anywhere near it, so I'm not too worried about it personally, but some people are. Um, the other thing, while I'm showing this, you'll notice I've got some colored electrical tape going around this. Uh, this is something that I think Willie, uh, one of our old club members, kind of turned me on to, which was using colored electrical tape to kind of mark your tools so that they don't get lost or confused with other people's out in the field. Um, he would just do purple on his, and uh, they only make so many colors. I mean, they make a lot of colors. You can get at Home Depot or whatever, but they only make so many colors. So I decided to do two. I figured nobody's going to pick a two-color combination or whatever. So most of my tools are wrapped in orange and purple. Um, just something to think about if you get a lot of stuff to a bunch of people. I'll put these back in here to save some space. Uh, both of these are the same kind of screws. We use these like pull barn screws for holding our inboards on racks and things. They're a quarter inch hex head uh, with the washer on there. Very, the hex head stays sticking out of the wood, so very easy to find in the middle of the night when you're turning racks down and stuff. Um, a couple other things. So just longer screws here. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. I keep my Cobra reprogrammer in my toolbox. Uh, I don't keep it with like my modules or my R2. I don't always take my modules or my R2 with me when I go to shoots, but I almost always take my toolbox 
And there have been several instances where having my Cobra reprogrammer with me in my toolbox has helped out someone else. So just something to think about. Uh, this one's just got some random stuff in it, some knife blades, uh, one of the, I think that thing's supposed to slide, one of those screw, screw slides, but I think it's rusted. Uh, a bunch of pokes here, pokes of all sorts of varieties, some pie in the sky pokes from Willy. Uh, there's my purple and orange again. So that's kind of just a random one. Um, I ditched the last one so that I could fit more stuff in here. You can tell I have an entire bevy of magic markers here. Uh, probably don't need that many. This is for my camera. Probably shouldn't be in this for cleaning my camera. Probably shouldn't be in my toolbox. Uh, that's why we're doing this to figure out what's in here, what shouldn't be in here. And uh, magic markers just come in handy for marking stuff, obviously. Um, some more pokes. So, getting into this bigger area, this is a big poke. Uh, this was made for me uh, by Keith uh, down in. Uh, down with Sysboom. Uh, he's one of the guys that I first met down there when I first got into Pyro. Keith made these for me. Uh, I think I've got another one somewhere. Yeah. A couple of long ones. These were more specifically made for poking no abs uh, to get in there further. Uh, it's kind of handy to have around. Um, you know, when you get into pokes, um, this is kind of the Wild Willy style. Uh, lolly pokes kind of got popular. I honestly really like the ergonomics of the T handle. Uh, I think it's just much easier to poke into the cake. Uh, the other thing, if you don't know about pokes, um, sharpen them every now and then with a file or something. Uh, much easier to poke your cakes if your poke's a little bit sharp. What else? This is a uh, extendable spotting mirror, so uh, conceivably used for uh, clearing guns. Um, to be honest, I've never done that with it. I guess it's there if I want it. Uh, another poke. Uh, flush cutters that are a little rusty, probably need a new blade on there. Um, but these are just a single, single, this is a Plastic edge, sharp edge, sharp knife edge. Uh, I must have had some moisture get trapped in here sometimes. Stuff's all rusty. Uh, so I need a new blade for it, but these are very handy for cutting things like quick match or anything where you want to cut with, you know, a non-sparking. You don't want to use scissors or something like that. Uh, speaking of scissors, I have scissors as well. Um, controversies aside, there's plenty of times where you could use some scissors. Safety glasses. Uh, knife, uh, some little pliers, comes in handy for pulling zip ties really tight or something. Uh, a couple of eye match, another poke, uh, some wire strippers, maybe. Uh, another mirror thing, again, probably can take those out of there, not super useful. Some bigger markers. Uh, and a Cobra antenna extender, and then just some random drill bits. Always good to have extra drill bits. Seems like almost every shoot somebody didn't bring the right drill bit. And then yet another poke of yet a different style. Uh, I still like the T-handle the best. So let me, uh, found one thing that I don't really want or need in there, and uh, I think I'm gonna put the rest of this back in there. I don't, I don't know that I'm missing anything. Only one knife, probably a little on the uh, low side. I, usually these end up going missing. Uh, I like these green ones. They're pretty cheap on Amazon, I think. Um, they're not the easily re reloadable kind, but uh, they're very bright. I like them. I'm gonna put all this stuff back in here and then we'll go through this one. Okay, got that put away. Let's tear into this bigger one here. 
so this one is just a big uh, open cavity. There's, a, there's nothing special in here to see from a storage or compartment perspective. It's just a big space that you can throw a bunch of junk in. So let's see. Uh, first and foremost, I usually take a impact driver with me. Uh, it seems like nobody ever brings enough drills or impact drivers or anything. Um, maybe we should have a separate discussion at some point about drills versus impact drivers on the shoot site and uh, just why I like impact drivers so much more for the majority of what you do on the shoot site. Now, usually I don't bring a drill, I just bring an impact driver. Uh, this is just my old trusty Ryobi that's been through just about everything with me looks pretty beat up, but uh, honestly, I like it better than some of the new Ryobi ones. So I always bring it because everyone never remembers to bring a drill. And you end up with one, and one person with one drill can't do very much very fast. Uh, this is a newer Ryobi purchase, one of the little fans, uh, obviously a summer month item. Uh, a couple other Ryobi batteries. It's good to have extra batteries. I like Ryobi stuff, you can't tell. Uh, whatever, I don't remember what these things are called. Pro protractor. Uh, this is, I mean, you can do this on your phone too or whatever, but um, maybe it's a little more accurate. But just a very manual protractor. Uh, doesn't need batteries or anything, so it's kind of for setting angles on racks and stuff, if you want to get really precise. If I should explain what, what they're used for, if you're not familiar with them, uh, you can set them on a device and it'll tell you what angle that's set at. So that can, the bug spray is at 45 degrees right now. Uh, so, bug spray, sunscreen. Crucial items in the summer months. Well, sunscreen is crucial anytime, but bug spray crucial in the summer months. Uh, Ryobi little uh, USB adapter thing in case I need to charge my phone or whatever out in the field. Now we're going to get into some of the real tech that I carry with me that not everyone has. This may be the best pyro tool in the world. Uh, and I'm not, that's not hyperbole, that's not exaggeration. Uh, I can't believe that not everyone has, does not, I cannot believe that not everyone has one of these. I still don't think I said that right. Uh, the heavy, you want these heavy, so like this one in particular made by Scotch, uh, pretty heavy. Honestly, I would take it heavier if I could get it. If you want it heavy, but it pretty much stays put when you pull. Uh, and what that does is it allows you to get tape off of there with one hand while you're holding something else together with the other hand. Very, very, very useful. Um, if you haven't used masking tape as part of your pyro kit, if you're just purely a duct tape person, I've been there, I get it. Uh, uh, scotch tape, masking tape, whatever, is amazing. Uh, by far my favorite type of pyro tape. Um, and one of the big reasons is you can get a holder like this for it. They make other holders don't get the light ones, so you just drag them across the table before you pull it. They do make some that clamp onto the table. Those are pretty nice as well. Uh, the pain in the butt part is just if you want to move them, then you got to unclamp them and reclamp them to the table. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I think they're pretty cheap though. So um, I know there's a lot of guys that use those too, and uh, that's fine. Um, but my favorite is still this. A huge thanks to Keith for originally introducing me to those. Uh, so along with that, I keep some extra masking tape in there. What else do I have? I have some drill bits. Not going to do me a whole lot of good if I don't take a drill with me. But uh, maybe somebody else has a drill, but they don't have the right size drill bit. So maybe that will come in handy someday. Uh, some more um, drivers. I don't remember what's in here. I don't remember how to open it either. No, just some more uh, drill bits and uh, driver bits. Um, so again, always seems like somebody doesn't have the right 
kind or size. So I try to keep quite a bit of that with me and just make sure prepared. Uh, marking flags, great for marking out your positions. Uh, um, the advanced level strategy here is uh, you get a magic marker and ahead of time you actually write on the flag what position it is so that people helping you set up know that oh, I'm at position three or I'm at position A or whatever your positions happen to be labeled. Uh, some random uh, fire wire in there. Uh, some side cutters. I don't honestly know what I've ever used these for in Pyro, but um, I mean, if you need them and you don't have them, it's not a good situation to be in. Uh, some more flush cutters, uh, the non-rusty kind. Uh, what else? Some electrical tape. Electrical tape, good for uh, maybe you want to cover up some exposed wiring or maybe you need to make an egg for a fireball or something. If you're doing that, you probably already have all that figured out. Uh, another Sharpie. You can tell I really like Sharpies. There's another marking flag. Flashlight, probably. Oh, it still works. Wow. Oh, wow. It's not off. Here we go. Probably need to change the batteries, so probably good I'm doing this. I'm really surprised that still works, honestly. Uh, everything else in here, I think, is... Yep, a ton of zip ties. Uh, zip ties, another one of my all-time favorites for pyro. Uh, just so many things you can do with zip ties. I like to keep a variety of sizes. Uh, these are the... Well, these are in millimeters. So depending upon where you're watching from, this is not going to do you very much good. Uh, these are 350 millimeters. Uh, I believe that's like 14 inches. These ones I know are eight inches, 200 millimeters. Uh, what I am missing though is uh, these ones. I've got a few loose ones in here. Uh, you can tell these are a little bit longer than the red one, a little bit shorter than the green ones. This is actually my preferred size. I think these are 11 inch. Um, I got all these from Mono Price. I found them. Uh, we did just did a huge group buy like five years ago or something. Whenever I first got the Power Llamas, and um, I ended up keeping more than some, some. Some folks never picked up their order, so I kept some of their so I have it anyway. That like. Lifetime supply of a lot of sizes of zip ties, but I've managed to use all of the 11 inch zip ties. So uh, I need to place an order for some more. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So I think that's it. Uh, so what did I learn? I need to change my batteries and my flashlight. I need to get some more 11 inch zip ties. Uh, is there anything that I wish I had in here that we didn't pull out of here? Well, I already mentioned I probably need to throw a couple more knives in since there's always tend to grow legs and wander off. And uh, other than that, um, I think I usually keep some foil tape in here just in case I need to cover like some finale strings or anything. So I may toss some of that in, didn't have any of that in here. Honestly, I don't have any duct tape in here, so I do need to throw in some duct tape. As much as I like masking tape, there certainly are times and places for duct tape. Um, so I need to add that to the list, add in here. Um, so yeah, I, I uh, not, nothing too crazy here, I don't think, um, in terms of pyro kit. But I am curious if there's things that you guys take along with you that you think uh, I need to add to my kit or maybe missing out on um, uh, or conversely if there's anything you picked up that you plan on adding to your pyro kit that you hadn't thought of I uh, would love to hear that as well so just uh, add it to the comments down below we'll keep the conversation going uh, one other thing probably a, a noteworthy thing I, I do have a first aid kit in all my vehicles um, so I don't that doesn't make the listing as part of the pyro kit, uh, but I do always have a first aid kit with me. Um, 
Uh, more so for, you know, like the small scrapes and cuts and stuff on the pyrocyte. Hopefully there's nothing too major going on on the pyrocyte. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next one.